pro-life groups have been forced to get creative in recent weeks to continue their life-affirming work in the midst of a pandemic. From canceled canvassing efforts to marches to fundraising dinners, the pro-life push has now gone virtual. During this truly unprecedented time, we're seeing pro-life groups having to scrap their best laid out 2020 plans, pivot and launch new innovative programs to advance their life-affirming missions. For example, Heartbeat International transformed their major conference to a virtual conference. The Sisters of Life Benefit Gala became a virtual gala. And another COVID-19 response we've seen is now the March for Life is educating pro-lifers on how to lobby lawmakers from social media. To discuss this unique time in the pro-life movement, we are joined now by Jeannie Mancini. Jeannie is the president of the March for Life Education and Defense Fund, and she joins us now via Skype. Jeannie, thanks for being here. As a pro-life leader, how has the coronavirus pandemic impacted your day-to-day -day work at the March for Life? Well, thanks for having me, Catherine. And, um, you know, it's it's been very interesting. In a lot of ways, it hasn't impacted us that much. I mean, we're still working very much towards the same mission of making abortion unthinkable, but it's impacted how we are approaching that. So some of the state marches that we had planned for, well, one for April and, and one for May, we've postponed right now. So that was the Connecticut March for Life and then the Pennsylvania March for Life have been postponed. We'll also be postponing a California March that was planned in Sacramento in June. Um, and in their place, in the moment, we're doing some online lobbying and advocacy events. So people can, you know, get online, check out a webinar and learn how to interact with their state legislators, even as they're under quarantine. So that's one thing that we're doing. Another thing that we're doing is just taking advantage of the fact that while everyone's home, there's a lot of mom and dads that are homeschooling now that hadn't and are looking for good resources. So we also have developed some really good advocacy online resources. If you go to our website, marchforlife.org, you'll see it's it pops up right away, different advocacy efforts and, and different resources that you can use during this COVID-19 quarantine. And then we're doing some really fun, creative things too. And if you're interested, I can tell you about that as well on the lighter side. Yes, I, I'd love to hear more. I saw some very innovative virtual ideas, including movie nights. How are you doing that? So um, one of our wonderful staff people, Ann Claire Levy, developed this idea of Friday night movie nights. And it was the very first night, the, the very first Friday night that we were in quarantine that we started these. And so we've been working with Jason Jones particularly. And each Friday night, we'll show another pro-life movie. We started with like really short pictures, 15 or half an hour. Um, you know, time slot. So, so not long movies, but we've done some longer ones as well. One of my favorites, and I highly recommend people can still see it on our Facebook page, is a documentary about Unplanned. It's about a half an hour long. And in some ways, I think it's even more powerful than the movie itself. It's just incredible. Um, last I checked, we had well over 20,000 views of that documentary. This Friday night, we're showing a movie that's beautiful. It's, I would say it's PG-13 and it's particularly geared towards middle schoolers and it's called Because of Grazia. And it's a story of a, of a high school student who has an unplanned pregnancy and how she handles it. So that's another great resource. Moms and dads can watch this with their children and process it and talk through it. So, um, so our Friday night movie nights have been a lot of fun. We've also been doing a lecture series online, um, depending on sort of what's going on. So on National Doctor Appreciation Day, we had Dr. Christina Francis from the Association of Pro-Life OBGYNs. Um, we also had Abby Johnson that same day, just to talk a little bit about some of the abortion advocacy efforts, sort of as we're facing this national pandemic and what we can do about it. We've had other great guests as well. Um, anything from Support After Abortion, a new group that's working on supporting women who regret their abortions, um, as well as you know how to engage young people in online advocacy, et cetera. So we've, we've had a lot of fun and a lot of success with these online events. That's great. And Jeannie, looking forward, we're seeing other pro-life marches, like the scheduled March for Life Canada, transition and become a virtual march. I know we are still a long way out until January 2021, but has the March for Life started making any contingency plans? 
Well, I was just emailing this morning with our National Park Service point of contact, but we're very much hoping to march in January. And I would say, you know, the, the different programs that I just highlighted is one aspect of what we've been doing under quarantine. But I'm so proud of our small March for Life team. We've been working so hard also just on some deeper strategic work. And it's my belief that this next March is going to be the most powerful ever because of some of the work that we've been able to do in this quieter time. Well, as always, we're grateful for you and your innovation. Jeannie Mancini, president of the March for Life Education and Defense Fund, thank you. Thanks for having me. We continue this conversation with Sue Liebel, the state policy director for the Susan B. Anthony List. She joins us now via Skype from Indianapolis, Indiana. Sue, it's good to speak with you. The Susan B. Anthony List is a grassroots pro-life group, and I know a large part of your job is door-to-door -door canvassing. How has this pandemic affected your work? You know, despite the fact that the coronavirus has stopped our canvassers from visiting voters at their doors, uh, our team has quickly transitioned uh, into live voter phone calls in key battleground states like Arizona, Florida, um, Michigan, North Carolina. And to date, they've made, since you know coronavirus started, they've made um, nearly 650,000 calls uh, to voters. And that, that's on top of the 800,000 door-to-door -door visits that we made before this. So we're not slowing down. We're still as committed, uh, actually more than ever, to reelecting uh, pro-life President Donald Trump and also um, a pro-life majority in the U.S. Senate. So I know there is a lot of misinformation swirling around right now, including misinformation about COVID-19 and the health mm. of pregnant women. What should All our right. viewers know? Well, it's true. Um, the extreme pro-abortion uh, Democrats are, are, are fear-mongering and pressuring women to have abortions um, and spreading lies about how the COVID-19 affects pregnant women. Um, and Planned Parenthood and their allies are even using up our precious personal protective equipment um, and claiming that abortions are necessary. But, you know, here's the truth. Um, there is uh, no evidence that pregnant women are at higher risk of contracting COVID-19. Um, and pregnant women with the coronavirus are not likely to uh, give that to their baby. Um, infant death by COVID-19 is very rare. So there are ways that pregnant women can protect themselves, much like you and I do, staying out of crowds, staying away from people who are sick, washing your hands. Um, uh, it's, it's just not true. Uh, it's not true um, no matter what they say. Um, we also need to remember, I'd like to share if I may, we wanna help pregnant mothers in your communities. Many of the pro-life pregnancy centers are putting up wish lists on Amazon.com for the things that they need right now. Mm -hmm. The pregnant women, you know, need diapers and material assistance and help. And so, look for your local center and if they have a um, a wish list on Amazon.com. That's a great reminder. And I know the Susan B. Anthony List has a great website about the truth about the coronavirus at yes. sba-list.org forward slash coronavirus. Sue, how can pro-lifers advocate for pro-life laws and candidates in their own states right now amidst a pandemic? Well, now more than ever, we need to engage our family and our friends um, to vote for President Donald Trump, the most pro-life president in history, come November. We need to be thinking about that now. Um, he is in stark contrast. The, the contrast couldn't be greater between him and Joe Biden, who with the Democratic Party would let extreme abortionism, um, extremism abortion run rampant um, And if he wants to become president. So we can't allow that to happen. We need every single pro-life vote to get to the polls in November. Um, and if you live in a battleground state, um, like I mentioned, Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, uh, Michigan, and you want to get involved, um, you could join, uh, people could join our field team and make those voter calls. We're, we're looking for all the help we can get, uh, get involved. Um, I can give you a website that people could go to if they, or an email if they want to find out more about it. That's jobs at sbalistfield.org, jobs at sbalistfield.org. Get involved. Join us. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to advance and move forward in the pro-life cause. Sue Liebel, State Policy Director with the Susan B. Anthony List.
Oh, thank you. 